Today's video, we're gonna restore some patio furniture. As you can see, this patio furniture that we got off Facebook Marketplace for 40 bucks, not looking too good. So instead of buying a new one, I'm gonna show you how to add some life to yours. Very easy, very straightforward, and you'll have results that end up looking like this. Look how great this turned out. And this was just from a can. I'm pretty impressed with how this turned out. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. I promise you, you can do this yourself and you'll be so excited with the results. Let's get started. It's as easy as two steps. One, we're gonna prep the surface. So we're gonna sand it down, we're gonna wash it down. If you have a pressure sprayer, that's great. But for me, I don't have a pressure washer, so we're just gonna do our best. And then step two is just the paint. So let's get started. Let's quickly talk about paint. Obviously, that's an important part of this job. Make sure whatever brand and type you use, color, whatnot, you read the can in its entirety, especially before you leave the store. That way you save yourself from a potential extra trip back to the store. Also follow all the guidelines on weather, humidity, and wind, things of that nature, because that will affect your paint job. Lastly, make sure that the paint you're using is compatible with the type of material you're working on. So I am working with metal, so this is good to go. Let's get started. The success of any paint job is all about the prep work. So here you can see I'm using a low grit sandpaper between 100 and 200 to scuff up the surface to give that paint something to really hold on to. Take your time here because it's all about the prep work. To ensure the best possible prep job, I'm actually going to take off the wing nuts that go around the bottom of the table so I can get every spot. You can see how much easier this makes to actually get the base of the table. Again, it's all about this prep work, so you really want to take your time. Be really attentive to detail because paint won't mask mistakes, it won't mask issues. So try and do your very best to make it look as best as possible. Peeling and chip paint are especially issues you want to look out for. As you can see here, I'm just using a flathead screwdriver to get off the bigger chips of old paint and then I'm using the sandpaper to make it nice and smooth. You can see the difference. Here's the old chip paint and here's the surface after we've just spent a little time scratching that away, making it nice and smooth so it's ready to paint. Now I temporarily reassemble it, that way I can use my impromptu pressure washer just to wash off any other loose debris and dust and whatnot. Once it's all washed off, I'll then use some soapy water again, just following the directions, degrease the surface, that way it's ready to accept that paint in the best possible way. Take your time here, get every nook and cranny. And then the last thing I personally like to do is go over one more time, but this time with a wire brush, especially on metal to give it a good final clean, and then I'll wash it down. Now that the furniture is dry and the temperature is adequate for painting, I'm going ahead and start doing my first coat. Don't try and get all the paint on there at once. Take your time doing light coats. Ultimately, just follow the instructions on the can as far as your distance, overlapping coats and whatnot, dry times, things of that nature. Again, try not to wear clothes that you care about, especially if it's a little windy, because I promise you, you will get sprayed. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience. Also, try and do it on a surface that you don't mind sacrificing like I did with the cardboard. Here I am on what I believe to be is my second coat. I think I only did two coats for all the furniture. Your experience might vary, so just be prepared. Another big tip I want to give you is when you're spraying, don't start spraying on the furniture. Spray off the furniture and then come onto the furniture. That way you don't get blotches. It looks phenomenal. Let's let it dry overnight so we don't mess up any of the paintwork and then we'll get it back together and see how it looks. It's been 24 hours and this thing looks phenomenal. Let's get it fully assembled so you can see the end result. So here is the end product. Now I'll have to confess that we did get some new cushions so I think that really helps to have that color pop and helps it look a little bit nicer and newer. 
But I gotta say, that paint did a really, really nice job in making this furniture almost, maybe from a distance, look pretty brand new. So, you know, if you have the time and the patience, I would say absolutely go for it. The results speak for themselves. It's very easy. If you can muster up the patience to do some sanding, then I promise you, you can get results like this. If you just take your time, follow the instructions, you can renew your furniture. Rather than throwing it away, putting it in a landfill, you can make that furniture last that much longer and look that much more rejuvenated. I was able to recoup some of the cost by selling the old cushions on Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks, so you might want to consider the same.